Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO WrestleCast. Coming at you a little differently. We had to uh, record early, so we're recording now. Uh, so if you miss anything, expect to hear it on Thursday between now and, I don't know. I mean, it's about 5 o'clock. So. Uh, but it's a two-man power trip for you. It's, of course, your host, Matt, here with Ryan Alvarez. We got a fun show, I think. Yeah. Um, we're no longer we're no longer on a tape delay uh, back here in the glorious state of Virginia uh, birthplace to the most United States president. So hang on to that little factoid for when you need it on jeopardy. Um, some brand new led lighting. Uh, go good, ahead and man. suck it. Regular amazing. light bulbs. <laughs> um, I am ready to spring ahead, which is what we all did. Unfortunately, uh, that was it. Don't remind yeah. me. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, some of us were on spring break, uh, so it doesn't affect them. Yeah. It was great. Well, that's a lie, though, because I am also taking classes right now, so <laughs> so I still have work to do. It's just not the same amount of work. Uh, so we got really three main topics here. I mean, we got two things at WWE, one thing out of Impact, and, of course, we're going to give you the update on the New Japan Cup. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start with WWE. Uh, they actually just recently sent out a survey to their fans where they name dropped AEW. Uh, so in the survey, fans are being asked what aspects come to their mind when they think about AEW Dynamite, what they like and dislike about watching Dynamite, and how they keep up with content from the show. Now, I got to imagine, I think a lot of people would immediately jump on this and be like, huh? Uh-oh. But I think this is mainly as anything any wrestling company would do in terms of it. I mean, they also have questions about uh, New Japan, Ring of Honor, and Impact. Um, one question even is asking, like, what do you like, if anything, about watching AEW Dynamite? I just think this is a total, like, okay, let's see what, what – where's everyone's interests are right now? Yeah, um, this, this is very interesting um, only because I feel like when they send these out, um, it's to gauge what their, de- what their demographic is. And I think with this, they're just trying to fish for anything that can pull more of that 18 to 34, or sorry, 18 to 49, or 18 to 40. What is it? 18 to 49. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, The 18 to 49 demographic, um, when NXT was on the network, that is when I watched NXT the most. Yeah. Um, and I feel like since their jump to USA Network, it's been kind of main rostered in the fact that we're no longer putting together things that fans want to see. Now that it's in the public's eye, now that it's in the realm or the same bubble as you know Vince McMahon's line, line of sight, he has to make sure that, you know, you know, he's, he's trying to get that back, I feel like, and, you know, to, to, to fish and, you know, see what other good, good companies are doing. I mean, it's not a bad business practice. And I, really? I don't think at this stage in business man's career, anybody's going to bat an eye at it, but let's all be honest. This is not for Vince. No. Okay. This survey is not for Vince. Vince is Vince barely. And okay. It's funny being, because I mentioned this in the, um, I mentioned this in our sacrifice uh, prediction show um, on the drive on the multiple hour drive up to Pittsburgh. Um, <laughs> ended up listening to the Chris Jericho, John, John Moxley podcast episode. Um, Vince McMahon doesn't watch his own product. He films it. He puts on what he wants to put on. He doesn't watch his own product, let alone other products. So let, let, let's, let's be honest. This is not for, Vince, this is for stockholders. It's for marketing. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's why I don't think people should really read too much into this. Uh, I think a lot of people are gonna see that headline and go, "Oh my God, guys, WWE talking about AEW," and they're gonna lose their minds about it. Guys, keep it chill, yeah. keep it relaxed. All right, uh, this is just marketing. It's just the business. Just to keep everyone happy. Um, they might update how they do some posters. Maybe we'll see some different storylines, but I don't know if we'll really see anything major out of this. It's just keeping tabs on the fans and what they do and don't like. It's like the yeah. one time we get feedback that's not 
uh, completely and totally based off fan reaction. Yeah, do don't expect. Now. Yeah, don't expect to see, um, you know, triple threat revolver matches and exploding barbed wire death matches anytime on WWE programming. Uh, with them. I would love to see a barbed wire death match with explosions. Well, as long as they don't buy their bombs from Impact. As long as they don't buy it from Kenny Omega. Yeah, as long as they don't put Kenny Omega in charge of the ring building (laughs) bomb bomb purchasing process, we're going to be good. Yeah. (laughs) So let's move over here to our other WWE news here. We're going to talk about NXT first up here. So we're apparently dealing, uh, they are uh, apparently dealing with a current COVID outbreak. Uh, It was released uh, first. Where was it? Say? I think Fightful was reported today by Fightful Select, and then Dave Meltzer verified. Um, lots of positive tests. Uh, it's being reported today that some significant changes were made to this Wednesday's episode on the USA Network. Some talent have been contacted and told to quarantine, while others have been pulled from the show altogether. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been fear of another uh, outbreak uh, ever since a meeting or event that happened on Thursday of last week, which many performance center trainees were required to attend. It was said that several people at the meeting were not taking the proper precautions, which led to numerous talent being pulled and others quarantined. No word yet on which wrestlers have been pulled from this Wednesday show, and I don't think we really will see that. Um, we'll mm-hmm. probably just see matches changed around. I think there's a couple matches already uh, set up, like Thatcher and Champa versus Imperium, Swerve versus Leon Ruff, Jordan Devlin showing up, uh, Austin Theory versus Dexter Loomis, and LA Knight uh, versus Bronson Reed. Um, but I don't expect them to advertise this. Um, they've, the only time they have done that is with, uh, Drew McIntyre, because you had to, you really had to. He's your main champion. But, uh, I think the big thing for me here is, uh, for the report saying here, pulled from talent or pulled from the shows who are not adhering to protocol, um, but they're trying to do everything they can to avoid another outbreak this close to takeover and mania. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, you would hope at this point people would just be on board. But uh, yeah, Casey K- Kenzaro, just pulling a name out of the hat here, is not one of those people, um, as there have been numerous pictures dating back to last summer as her being a non-mask wearer. Um, So add you to the list along with uh, low-key Austin Aries, um, scum of the earth. Um, Here's the other thing. This is not NXT's first COVID scare. Actually, you, you might need, you know, I know on one hand you can count it, but they've had a handful of COVID scares to where Maybe at some point, you know, you stop having people watch your show. Like, uh, let me let me rephrase. Um, maybe you should stop having a live audience. And I understand that this is not that this is not the cause of it. But when does when do we draw a line here where we've had many COVID outbreaks now with one brand in? in particular and we have you know and granted it's probably you know um you know performance center you know enhanced in talent um but um but my source here at pwinsider.com um (laughs) one source pointed to a large group of performance center and nxt talents doing ring crew this past Thursday as a potential outbreak source. That same source noted that dozens of towns were moving and resetting rings in Orlando with many not wearing masks during that process. Um, it, we live in a world now where we need to be as safe as possible. And not that that hasn't been a rule before, but especially when there is a deadly disease that is still out there um, you know, not going to dive into COVID in general, but the fact that you have people taking things apart, you know, without masks and there are people touching, sweating, 
hand-to-hand -hand contact on things. You know, it, it leads the question, what is the mask policy? Who's, it, who's enforcing it? Um, in this particular case, why aren't they? Um, at the same time, you know, you can only pull so much talent from cards, you know, right. you know, and, and when, and when do we draw the line of, Hey, maybe to limit this, let's not have people at the shows. They're the only WWE brand under, under the umbrella. Okay. To have fans right now, it makes no sense. And going back and watching last, last Wednesday's show, um, you have, you still, you still have the digital boards in the background. And then in the foreground, you have, you have the, you know, performance center, jobbers, whatever you want to call them. Um, there's no need for both. Okay. You've got to jump to one side or the other. I know I'm ranting now, but come on. Like, well, you I don't think... see this on the main brand, either of them. You don't see this in AEW. You don't see this in New Japan. You don't see this in Impact. This is the only brand across the world where they still have wrestling going on, and there's case after case after case. When does when does when does the straw have to break here? Well, I think, and I want to point this out too, because we do know New Japan and AEW do have fans coming back. They do have fans in their arenas, but. In their, it, I guess, in their defense, I'm defending both of these companies right now. They have them away from the talent. They have them separate as best they can, at least throughout their stadium, their arenas that they're at. Um, if the performance center was bigger or could allow it, I, I don't have an issue with NXT having fans, but the fact that they're just right there next to talent is the concern. Mm. There's nothing stopping anyone from talent getting, getting sick by this. Um, and, and look, I'll say this too because I know it has been addressed. They do test for COVID. They mm -hmm. do check when before they come in. They do check temperatures. They do the same thing that I do after go to work. You know, and and to a degree, I get it. There's only so much pre, uh, precaution you can take. But I feel like I feel like NXT is not the show where you can keep putting these risks out there and i know our report also said these are trainees who came in not following mm. protocol it's on them it's on them for for not following along and getting the others sick um, um i will cite pw insider again um as of uh as of 3 30 the only things that are advertised for this week's nxt is theory versus loomis swerve versus rough and la knight in action mm -hmm. which makes you concerned that bronson reed's probably out yeah and like, um, and like you said though the main concern um, <coughs> on top of everybody's health is we now have to put on a two-night takeover as well as if we're using any of this talent going into wrestlemania and we just can't afford to have this now i will say this right now there's nothing showing that anyone on the main roster shows are, are sick or have been in contact. Right. Um, and people started getting sick on Friday. So that's when we started seeing symptoms. Um, hopefully, if that timeline's correct, we probably limit the number of people in uh, showing up for NXT. If WWE is making the right choice here in terms of protecting their talent uh, for future bookings, all right? And, and, I don't know how big this is going to be for WWE, but tape NXT. Tape tape the next coming weeks of NXT. Yeah. I, I would also tell you, do the same thing for Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, if you're telling talent to quarantine, that's the best course of action. There's no reason to put your talent at risk if you're telling them to quarantine. Hey, we're going to tell you to quarantine, but hey, we're going to tell you to come into work. Come on in. Um, now, if you want to put them in a bubble, that's different. Um, which, as far as the talent that I've talked to, um, Ring of Honor is doing it correctly. They're bringing they're bringing talent in, putting them in, putting them in a bubble, yeah. having 
a handful of days in a row. We're going to tape all this stuff. We're going to tape it. You go back home so you can sound. That's it. Yeah. And, and you know what? Maybe to a degree you're worried that if they go home, there's more likely that they get contacted there. Maybe that's the case. Rent out a hotel. Yeah. Now, now that, like, that's a business expense. Don't get me wrong. That's a lot of money. Okay. It's not like you didn't make, you know, $41 million, you know, you know, last quarter alone, you know. Um, here is, here is the, the bottom line for this. So Friday they started feeling sick. Everyone's on a two week schedule from initial exposure which was, I think they said last Thursday, so the 11th. Mm -hmm. So essentially everyone has until the 25th of March. All right, that's two NXT tapings from there, but you still have the 31st, and then the week after that you have both takeovers. All right? Record all of it on the 31st. Or, or maybe maybe go live on the 31st and record the takeovers on the 1st and 2nd of April. All right? Because here, here's the other part of this. Uh, who, who is coming in between NXT and the main roster shows? Is Triple H doing that? Is Triple H seeing Stephanie who's coming over and doing that? How many yeah. degrees of separation do we have here? before this puts WrestleMania at Jeopardy. We've already pushed it back initially once. You know, and the other thing to pile on top of that is the newest report says we're trying to get 45,000 people at each night of WrestleMania. So if you're the city of, or, you know, I mean, if, I mean, if you're Tampa Bay, okay, and you're looking at this now saying, Oh, well, you can't keep this under wraps. Why should we have any fans? Yeah, I, and I know Vince is going to scratch and claw, and there will be COVID protocols in place. There will be people that are healthy. Vince will have X amount of fans both nights. But there's more to this than just than just professional wrestling. Wow. It's people doing their job. It's money. And unfortunately, and, yeah. that's what it's got to come down to. It's money. Vince will find a way to have it a show, and I'm sure they'll they will brand this being the biggest get together in in wrestling since COVID, and that's yeah. going to be the big thing. Hopefully, hopefully we don't see it turn into something worse. That that's the thing. No matter what, I imagine there are going to be fans there. I don't think that's going to be stopped. No yeah. matter what, I think there will be fans. Yeah, it's 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 just incredibly frustrating you know now that this is the well this is where we're at you you can definitely count on one hand the nxt outbreaks over the past year and we are up to a year now as far as as far as being in the united states yeah we already hit that yeah we've already hit that so when you can count on one hand how many outbreaks you had on your brand or on your team or on your, or on your sport, you know, it, something has to change. And look, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you the AEW hasn't had it. Cause we've seen their positives. We've mm-hmm. seen positives in every company, I think, except mm-hmm. for new Japan or ring of honor at this point. We, maybe we've seen one in ring of honor snaps for them. Yes. At least one. I think we've seen one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that was necessarily an outbreak as much as one person. Yeah. But K I N G K. Ah, yes. So there's that. You know, only only the one who, from my understanding, too, got it outside of the bubble. Correct. So I, I have a hard time putting that on Ring of Honor as well. Yeah. Um, my final thing here, because I'm done talking about, it, I want to get to good stuff. Um, you know, I just hope that we can get through WrestleMania season without any severe health risk, because I think that's been the biggest thing this whole time. Um, I think in the Super Bowl was the benchmark kind of to what we can do and, you know, um, 
you know, you know how many people we can have safe safely within one area. Um, and as long as WWE does that, um, pile pile as many people in as you can, as long as it's safe. As long as everybody comes out the other side safe. We're talking about this, and I literally just got uh, an ESPN notification yeah. about a, a basketball coach who just tested positive and is going to miss at least game one of, of national tournament. Gina Oriam is a treasure. We have to protect them. So, just emphasizing, guys, I know it feels like we're getting here near the end. People, people still getting sick. Like, <laughs> So let's move on here. All right, because we have battered this at this point. Let's go to the New Japan Cup because we are now down to our Elite Eight. I'm going to step in here, Matthew. Yeah, take uh, it over. Go back, go back and check the prediction show because Ryan Alvarez is eight for effing eight. Okay. And I'm going to go on record here because there were some that I conceded to um, over the PWO banner. But the first words out of my mouth were your current final eight. And you can go back and check it. I'm telling you now. Ryan Ryan Alvarez, eight for eight. And I'm freaking happy because this whole tournament is very much so what you want to see from New Japan. It's the last couple of shows. I know we've said it a couple of times here. The last couple of big main cards have been okay. Okay, I would been, say. They've been good. They've been fine. Just haven't been um, New Japan. But this New Japan Cup is back to New Japan form. And I couldn't be happier as a fan of the sport um, to see that. So props to New Japan. Props for good booking. Um, so our elite age here are, and I believe these are set up in match order. So it'll, it'll be Evil versus Toriano. Mm-hmm. Shingo Takagi versus Kenta. On the other side of the bracket, it's going to be Will Ospreay versus Sonata. And it will be David Finley Jr. versus Jay White. Now, out of all this, I think six of the eight could win. Are you saying that are you saying that Yano, David Finley could not win? Yes. <laughs> now, I will say, speaking, speaking to David Finley, um, Taking a look at our sacrifice prediction show, I did I did predict the Finn Juice would win, um, and we will get to that here in a little bit. Um, but I was wrong; he was not carrying um, the Impact World Tag Team Championship belt to the ring uh, with his match against Yoshihashi. I wonder if maybe they just didn't transport the belts, or maybe we have taped further, and we'll see. Well, we'll talk about more of that on on our yeah. sacrifice card here. Um, so I still feel really good here about evil over Yano Mm -hmm. Shingo versus Kenta with Shingo going over. I still feel like Osprey over Sonata, man. (sighs) Yeah. David Finley winning here has thrown a wrench in my plans here though. Cause I have a hard time seeing them go Osprey, Jay White, heel versus heel. I mean, it's, it's New Japan. They do what they want, and it'll be a good match. I just don't know if that's where we're heading. So maybe maybe Dave Finley gets the upset here, but I have a hard time saying Jay White loses before the Final Four. Um, yeah, I'm, um, I love it. Um, I I agree though. I think we will see Evil win. Um, Shingo, he is he is wrestling and cutting promos like he's gonna win the whole effing thing because he is. You know what? If it's him and Jay White in the final, and he beats Jay Jay White, I'm fine with that because because Shingo's a star. For first off, um, yeah, yes, he second, is. Um, him, uh, his match that he had with Goto um, was one of my favorites in the New Japan Cup so far. Um, that and the first round matchup between, oh man, Shingo and Okada. That one was great too. 
Who would have uh, guessed it? I know, right? It's like it's like it's like he's a great wrestler or something. Right? Um it's like he's the best. And so it doesn't it doesn't matter who wins the evil Yano. I mean, you could have shenanigans, who cares? Um, it's gonna be Shingo in the final. Um his promo after his win against Goto, he's essentially calling out uh, Kota Bushi. He's coming for it. This is the time. This is the okay. I know in my I know in our prediction show, I said that Jay White was going to win it all. I did, and I forget who you picked. I picked Shingo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, he. I'm. I'm. I'm sold. This is the absolute time to pull the trigger. He is yeah. red hot. He's on fire. He is wrestling like his life depended on it. And here, and here's the bigger thing. His first two rounds are big wins. He's not, and you know, not not to say that there's nobody in this tournament that is already in it, but we're looking at it now. He has a win over Kazuchika Okada, and then his second round win against Hiroki Goto. Like. That's two big names. And okay, he's gonna he's and then he's gonna win against Kenta. So that's a third big name. Say he's gonna be evil to get to the final. That's four big names. This is a star making performance for him. And it, it's top guy after top guy, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's no doubt. Um, so it really does doesn't matter what happens on the other side, in my eyes, although. So I kind of have this feeling that everyone in Bullet Club is going to be out this next round. I feel like all of them go out because I feel like these are all three guys who are trying to claim that they're the guy. Oh. I have a weird, like, it's really weird to say David Finley over Jay White. Um, and that is, I think, a big push. Like, that might upset Jeff Hall here saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but hear me out, David Finley, they've pumped up as a guy. I mean, he was the runner-up in the U.S. tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done great. He's a former tag champion. He's a current tag champion in another company. He's represented your brand well across all, all of it. I, I just got this feeling I could see it because I don't see them going Osprey, Jay White in the semis. Could you see Sonata and Jay White? Um, less likely, I think. Yeah, that was that was my gut feeling as well. Um, I wouldn't mind any combination winning out of this and getting to the final. I think if you're really gonna drive home, you know, a star making performance though for Shingo, um, I don't think you put David Finley in the in the final with him. Um, Agreed. Really, anybody else though. Maybe Will Ospreay. So hear me out now. Uh, and here's where I think this is full circle here. Ospreay ended the undefeated streak, didn't he? I believe so. You know, there's so much storytelling. Ospreay over Shingo and Best of Super Juniors. I don't think Shingo has a win over Will Ospreay. You know, so it, it's Ooh. almost become death taxes, Ospreay over Shingo. So I think this would be a great Great moment to pull the trigger and shock the world here. Um, yeah, according to Cage Match, and I know we're on air. We got this. Oh, you're good. Um, yeah. Um, <coughs> I apologize, guys. I'm still recovering from a science infection, so all geez. my coughing and everything. I'm good. Yeah. I'm just no allergic to everything. Yeah, never, never beat Osprey. And like I said in the prediction show, um, Osprey getting to the finals and losing it is huge make, still for him. It makes the Empire look great. Yeah, especially That's, since you I had the first round. Especially since you had Jeff Cobb gets to the second round, Grant Khan gets to the second round. Okami beat Naito. Okay, That's yeah. a huge win. That's that's gigantic. I, I I would not predict that in a thousand years. Yeah, there's just there's no way. Give me a, I mean, the yeah, option. Night night to get into the second round. I mean, but the same. I mean, but the same with Okada though. Yeah. Um, well, 
No, Okada there's a part of me I would... facing Shingo in the first round. There's always that one match, though, in a lot of the recent tournaments, not even just in New Japan, but you look back to the Ring of Honor uh, pure, pure tournament, you had Jay Lee versus Dalton, Dalton Castle first round. Um, yeah, there's got to be some big heavyweight bout in the first round every time. Yeah. Um, if I if I may, though. Of course. Um, Yuji Nagata looks great. I thought I got caught in the work for a brief second um, <laughs> because Yuji Nagata at 52, okay, is outworking some of these young lions, and I love it. Um, if you yeah. don't know, or if this now is your you first time on podcast World Order, I have a huge Yuji Nagata mark, have been since I saw him in WCW as a kid. Um, seeing him wrestle and keep up with Sonata at 52 years old is absolutely incredible for my young eyes. Oh, man, I'm with you. I'm I'm excited. I mean, we still got what? Uh, when's the finals? For this? I just literally closed out on my... Uh, finals going to be March 21st, so a couple of days. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's going to be so good. I believe, actually, we got our next match tomorrow. Yeah, uh, because they're all... Um, I believe they're off. They have a they have a break. So it's it's uh, we're gonna get the, evil versus uh Yano and uh Shingo versus Kenta tomorrow. On the 18th, we'll get Osprey, Sonata, and uh Dave Finley, Jay White. 20th, we'll have both semis, 21st we'll have finals. Sounds right. Uh, that's just going off the graphic that we have. Um, they all saw a whole lot of on our prediction show. Yeah, true. Um, uh, yeah, so we're going to get action in the morning, and then Wednesday we'll have off, and then Thursday we're back to action. Man. Listen, I'm going to preach this again because I've done it for a while. Guys, take your hard-earned $9.92 because they convert it from yen, okay? Take it, invest in New Japan World. Okay. Now, real quick though, okay. while we're doing that, I might encourage everyone to wait until April 1st. Just, oh, yeah. Just because You're right. the way their billing is set up, it's not set up to be a month from when you started it, but it's from the first of every month. So you're going to lose about 15 days if you do it today. Normally, That's I'm okay. with you. Do it right away. Okay. It's fun. It's worth it. Wake ah. up at five. Wake up at five a.m. Watch some gr- guys. This is the best. Th- th- this is the one of the best wrestling products on the planet. It if is. It is the best wrestling. Get in on this. Get your week's worth, and then pay the full nine ninety two for the rest of April. You know, do it. Do it. Do it for Ryan Alvarez. Okay. There you go. Or right. do it for Dwight. <laughs> Doing it for Dwight. Doing it for Dwight. Doing it for Dwight. Man, that was such a fun little outro we had there. <laughs> Why did I just close? Man, it's a hard time over here. I am struggling. Let's talk sacrifice. Yes, my uh, sacrifice. Now, this was a good show. Kind of a sneaky good show. It delivered more than I was expecting. Um, but man... Some of it really, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like some of it was really good and some of it was just like, meh. Listen, there were highs and lows to this show and I think you had to watch it continuously to get that yeah. vibe. No, I'm with that. So uh, first match of the night is Decay, Black Taurus, and Crazy Steve and they defeated Reno Scum. With a little help from Rosemary. Yeah, that green mist though. That green mist though. Tadeo Dashwood and Caleb with a K defeat Havoc and Nevea. We're going to continue pushing uh, that maybe they're not getting their ish together. Yeah, and I'm and I'm fine with it. I mean, it gives uh, your it gives your mid card talent something to do and potentially pushes to Neil Dashwood as maybe a future contender. Here's my only issue. 
who the hell's next for the women's tag titles? <laughs> Does it matter? Uh, now, define doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry. Do we care? Or does it matter that we need to actually have a challenger here? Because we need to have a challenger here. Here's here's my full, honest opinion. You should have never done it in the first place. Correct, Amundo, my friend. I've been on this train for a long time. Mm. Choo-choo. The train's on the tracks. So now we're recycling garbage again. Because, look, okay... The whole, the whole, the whole, you know, denouement of this entire feud is going to be Havoc and Nevaeh getting the one up, and then we're going to get another rematch with them and Fire and Flavor, where they take the titles eventually, sure. and then we recycle it because outside of Jordan Grace and Jazz, which we will get to in a minute later, Fire, Fire and Flavor, who we will get to in a little bit, and Havoc and Nevaeh. You left out my favorite tag team. Oh, go ahead. It's Kimberly and Susan. Oh, okay. Which, who else you got? Which won't be a tag team for much longer. Yeah, who else you Spoiler got? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Seriously. Who else you got, dog? There's nobody left. Now, hear me out. I got someone you got who's not on your roster who can show up and win your women's tag oh, titles. Elise and Diamante, baby. Yeah, I would love that. Uh, or maybe, I don't know, let's get a two-woman power trip and have uh, newly won, I, I don't know, give Thunder Rosa some belt. Maybe maybe have her take the belt off of uh, off of Deanna Perrazzo to shock the world. Have uh, Serena Deeb as NWA champ. Have them win it all, baby. Hold all the gold. <laughs> yeah. Um, I still, I still don't care. They're going to have to do it. Now it's not going to prevent me from watching impact. No, that's just like, well, look, you look, take the I'm good and the bad with a lot of wrestling you watch. All I'm saying is anything with Thunder Rosa, I am giving my full attention to. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she has her hands busy with Camille though, coming up next Sunday, back hey. in the attack NWA's <sighs> return. Now, now, I got to say this here and now before we get to that prediction show, and I'm going to have a really just rough time having to pick between the loves of my life on this one. Because on one hand, Camille, I mean, she's she's the first woman we ever interviewed. I mean, it's... She a, did support Ben, though. Thunder Rosa, let's go, baby! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, Look, I've said it. I'll continue it. This is and always will be a Thunder Rosa stand account. So, yeah. Before we get to the next match, you already knew what the result and uh, impact on NXT so damn hard from time to time. So we get this backstage segment. We had this backstage segment, and I had to pause to go back and rewatch it to capture it. Okay, you had Eddie Edwards. And Rich Swan, and essentially Eddie Edwards is supporting Rich Swan in his fight against not only Moose but Kenny Omega. You didn't have to say Kenny Omega. You're giving away the damn finish of your match. Okay. Uh, now I know that there's some past history, and it doesn't really, you know, spoil anything. But you know. There has been nothing on the surface, as far as Impact TV goes, that has even had Kenny Omega on it. No, other I'm than here. I'm gonna interject. Go because go they already put it out there that whoever wins the belt is then go then go on. Oh no, and that's what I was it. getting at. Was that? That's, I think that's I think that thing. being already stated kind of gives it some leeway. If uh, we had more of a moose segment in his promo and he didn't just say I'm done talking you know if they if they had a longer interview section there and they brought it up they would have to bring up Kenny Omega as well but because Moose just says he's done talking I, I don't know I don't have an issue with it personally yeah um this rubbed me the wrong way really though um Eddie Edwards nobody on this show is a huge fan of his homeless look um although he sported some new gear so I'm 
Okay yeah, with that. Hard to kill T-shirt. Yeah, a hard to kill T-shirt. Um, it's just some, some, just something about this just rubbed me the wrong way, and it's probably because Eddie Edwards said Kenny Omega. I don't know, but anyway, go. So. Um, yeah. Here's my other thing. Yeah, well, we'll get there. We'll get there when we get to the main event. We'll get the there. The time being. Up next, it's Violent by Design. It's Diener and Joe Doring with Eric Young versus Saban and James Storm with Jake Something. Um, now, Jake Something being here really just felt kind of, I don't know, added on at the last minute to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it made sense in the long run because we have a new member of Violent by Design. Yeah, we do. And his name is Rhino. Yeah. Um, no, I'm of two thoughts on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, all right, well, if we're going to use Rhino, I'm okay with having him here. Maybe we can create a tag team out of Rhino and Joe Doring or something along those lines to have that. And we need to have Diener go after the exhibition title. Because at this point, we have a four-person stable. Let's even it across the odds. Let, let's have everyone go for a belt here. I think it makes the most sense for Diener to go for exhibition belt because he just came from a tag team. Let's not throw him in with another one. Um, plus, I, so. I feel like he would fit real well in that division. Um, also, let's not forget Rhino still has the call your shot trophy. Well, and that brings up my other point here because Heath, I mean, he's been out. A while. I was about to say, I'm trying to think. It, it, it was after Slammiversary. Bound for Glory? Yes. So he's been out since what? Is that October? Um, bound for Glory, so that would be October. Boom. There it is. For me, this, this tells me that Heath is not going to be back anytime soon. No, I know. I believe he's actually signed to Impact mm-hmm. legitimately. Um, but uh, uh, that tells me we don't know what the Heath timeline is, and we're not feeling too confident on it. Um, yeah, agreed. So that was just the other. And I know Heath already put something out on Twitter saying, like, mm-hmm. Rhino, what are you doing? We got to talk about this. Call me. Yeah. Um, he, he had his surgery March 1st. Jesus, why the hell did that get pushed off so much? Um, so it was so it was a hernia suffered in the call your shot gauntlet match, um, and he was supposed to win. Rhino was supposed to be the runner up, but who knows? Oh, huh. this adds a lot. Because he's not going to be back till summer. Like, uh, I just don't understand how they pushed off having surgery that long. I mean, he got injured in October. That was a live pay-per-view. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to give you the answer. Okay. Um, he's dealing with a sports hernia on the left side of his pubic bone. Another hernia on his right side. His abductor muscle was ripped off the bone, and he has a rip in his abdomen wall on both sides. Um, he shares that he found a doctor who could perform all of the operations needed at once. This one, I'm never going to be a professional wrestler. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can also go to his Twitter. The whole video is there. Um, yeah. This sucks. Jesus. Yeah, that blows. That blows real hard. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Hey, thoughts and thoughts and prayers for, for Heath, man. Um, but back to this match. It was a yeah. refreshing surprise to see Rhino. The match was fine. Uh seeing Rhino, he's a great addition, a great veteran presence to Violent by Design. Um, already having the relationship there with EY. Um very excited. Now here is one more thing for me. And, and I really like how they've done a violent by design. I would personally get rid of Joe Doring and just have Rhino. But 
we can't undo what is done. Uh, so here's what I want, and maybe this is asking too much. Okay. They need to bring in one more person to join. And I don't care if it's a young man or a young woman, but it has to be someone relatively young in the business. Because EY, Rhino, Joe Doring are all up there. We can't give all of this rub just to Diener. I think we bring in one more person who's relatively young, who we can use and, and build up with this. I'm all for it. Personally, <laughs> and I believe, I, I don't know if she's signed or not, but uh, a great person for this, I'm double checking here, seeing if she is signed. I don't think she is. Yeah. Killer Kelly. I don't know if that's a name you know off the top of your head here. She's been on the Indies for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, and I believe she was a part of, of the women's tag tournament that happened there. I believe she tagged him with Renee Michelle. Correct. Um, but young talent will be great addition for the women's roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. I mean, she's only 28, and she fits the mold, all right? Her, her work style fits very well with the entire philosophy of Island by Design. I think that'd be a great, great get there for Impact. Um, I looked it up because he's only 30. Um, man... Mance Warner. Oh, that'd be good too. Um, Hell, bring um, in both I, of them. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen his work, um, I would recommend starting uh, with his match against Jimmy Havoc uh, from the beginning of last year um, with MLW. It was an absolutely phenomenal match. It actually cracked my top 10 of mid of mid year um, matches, uh, best of the year. So that should say something um but he would be just a big get for impact in general i feel like it could push tommy dreamer out the door faster you know what let's also push this one i don't know if she would go back uh allison k i don't think she's signed anywhere since leaving nwa no she was um she was on aew for, she only had the one match on the pre-show yeah. uh-huh which is great <coughs> one of the so, better pre-show matches we've seen in a while yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Kind of surprised we haven't heard her sign anywhere yet. That kind of makes me go like maybe we're going to see some a class announced after WrestleMania. But I don't know, man. We Look, we got to fix the oversaturation in that company. So for the love of God, I get it. Get your money and I appreciate you for it. Get your money in a different company that could use you really well right now. Yeah, I don't know how many bridges are burned for that, so I'm not going to push it. But Killer Kelly, Allison K, Mance Warner, um, trying to think, if there's anyone else who I would who I would say add to that roster here who you could take or pick up elsewhere? Um, you know what? He's old, but I don't know if he's signed anywhere. Uh, David Hart Smith. Um, WWE. Is that official? Um, as of the end of February, it was, um, Jeff and I talked about it in our MLW super fight 2019 review, um, on the ref bump, go check it out. Um, it is, but nothing has been noted since then. So, uh, maybe things have changed. So I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, all right. It says he is. I was about to say, I mean, you know, and also he's younger than I thought. He's only 35. Yeah. Jesus, he's only 35. He's got a couple of years, at least a couple of peak years left. Well, that's just a couple of them. You know what? Screw it. Josh Barnett. <laughs> just because. You know what? It's not a bad idea. How old is Josh Barnett? Oh. Sorry, guys. We're going down the rabbit hole here. But don't worry. While Matt's looking for that, I'm going to do you a favor. Never mind. Um, he's 43. Cut it. <laughs> the whole harmless match uh, between Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers. Um, um, uh, it was supposed to be a submission match. Oh, no. It's a it's a whole harmless match. So um, 
I think I think it was you who said in our prediction show, how many ways can you say no holds barred? Yeah, or no disqualification or a hardcore match. Um, this went on a little too long for me. I stopped caring the moment I realized that Eddie Edwards was going to win. Yep. Which is pretty early on. <laughs> yeah, which is very upsetting because... I like what they've been doing with Brian Myers. I think, I think the storyline when he got in was good. I think that Hernandez being the hired gun for him is good. It's utilizing your talent. Um, so I don't know why Eddie Edwards needed this win. This should have been Brian Myers to a T to set up the fact that he's a credible opponent for Matt Cardona. When we get it, April 28th at Rebellion. I'm starting to question if that match is going to happen. Damn it. Why? I mean, I, I think all signs point to it. But I don't know, man. Cardona's only had the one official two matches, right? Uh, Yeah. So I think he's only had the one with Fulton. Or no, he had the one with Ace Austin, and then I think he had a match with Fulton, and then the tag match. Mm. If you want to count him as a special guest referee as him having a match, then okay. Yeah. But yeah, I would say I do not, personally. Um, I just don't feel like Eddie Edwards needs this kind of rub right now. That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking, and, and my thought process was, let's get, if, if we're leading to as we were talking on the prediction show, Brian Myers versus Matt Cardona. If that's the rabbit hole we're going down, then give Brian Myers a rub. If not, give Brian Myers a rub. Eddie Edwards has been an impact. He's, he's been on the impact roster for a long time. He was an impact world champion <laughs> last year. He doesn't need a win in a hardcore match. Um, and also just to add to this, because I know I'm harping on this a lot lately on all shows. Eddie Edwards is 37. Brian Myers is 35. Brian Myers probably has also a little bit more tread on his on his career because he hasn't done all of these hardcore matches. Mm-hmm. Here's what this screams to me, and and it goes back to the the interview segment that you already were frustrated about, and I'm about to tell you why it's gonna make you even more frustrated. Because after Kenny Omega wins the uh, the Impact World Title, the first person up is gonna be Eddie Edwards. Yeah. Think about it; they push no, him so I... much as the heart and soul of Impact. He's a former champion. He's won all of his past feuds. Yeah, it, it's him. Kenny... It's him. I hope Kenny Omega gives him a Boston tea bag party. Stupid idiot. No, On I think, our next match. I think Kenny Omega's just going to murder him like he's going to do to our future, our, our winner of the main event here. Yeah. Fire and Flava defeated Jordan Grace and Jazz. I thought this was an okay, okay match. I don't think it was My bad. One problem, don't make Jordan Grace look bad here. I thought the way this match ended was a little weak. Um, um, I mean... Yeah. I have a and I don't know. It's because Jordan Grace is a little is a little bit. I mean, because let's face it, she is she is thick mama pom. All right, sure. She's a she's a bigger athlete. Sure. Don't tell me that ninety five pound Kiara Hogan, okay, can hit a neck breaker on her and win. Uh, she's one fourteen. And we kicked the head. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay. I know there were some other things. That Wait, wasn't to... it off of the double stomp neckbreaker combo? No, it was off of a, it was off of the poorly executed crucifix bomb. Ah, now hear me and out that, on and this. That might be why I'm so fired up about it because that thing was garbage. Um, but I just want them to take Jordan Grace as a credible competitor, and it looked the the finish just looked. Hear me out on this, and this is why I think this is good. All right. I really like the fact that we're emphasizing that 
two people who aren't an actual tag team can't compete with an actual tag team. Okay, I see that. Um, and I really hope this leads to a heel Jordan Grace who's tired of losing, tired of Jazz not being able to make the save, and maybe Jordan Grace is the one who gets to actually retire Jazz here. Because I think that's a good spot for her. It takes her out of the main event spot. Or not, uh, not main event, out of the title picture for the time being. Yeah. You know, we don't need to rush back to that, but maybe we can have Jordan Grace beat the hell out of a bunch of face females who she hasn't had the chance to compete with recently. You know, it gives it, it gives so much more life into Jordan Grace because I don't really care about her doing this tag team bit with Jazz. I much more would care about her putting people down. Yeah, I there's just something about fire and flavor that just rubs me the wrong way. And I don't know if it's because they constantly are made to look better than they actually are. And that is not to say they're not competent. And and that's exactly what I'm saying, though. I'm not saying that they're not competent in, in ring. I'm saying that it's being portrayed as too easy for them to defeat these larger opponents. I mean, Havoc and Nevaeh were both larger. Uh, Jordan yeah. Grace and Jazz larger. Now, granted, you know... There's no one on the roster. There's no one on the roster. These titles should not exist. Look at any other video where we talk about Impact Tag tag Team titles. Um, women's Tag Tag Team titles. That I don't get fired up about it because hmm. they, should, they shouldn't exist. You don't have the depth of roster or the or the talent. But don't tell me that they can constantly keep pulling out wins and being made to look stronger than they are. Now, here, let me ask you this, because I think this is a part of it. Would you feel better about this if Fire and Flavor had already eliminated or, or beaten and had a series of matches with talent similar to their size where they were dominant? I would have been happy if Jazz ate the pair. Ah, see, I'm with you. But here's what I've noticed. I don't think Jazz has eaten the pin in any match that they have lost as a tag team. If your theory is correct, and we're going to get a Jordan Grace turn to retire Jazz, it makes it a little easier to swallow. I mean, here's my thing. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and and do this one. Deion Perrazzo decimated ODB. Um. It was the worst match on the card. It was. I love ODB. I know she's overcome a whole bunch of stuff lately. Man, she does not does not hold a candle to Deanna Perrazzo right now. They talked about it on commentary and how which is more efficient, a rusty blade or a surgeon's knife. Clearly, Deanna Perrazzo is just cut above. And I, I'm, we've said this week after week after week. But here's my thing. Who the hell is left for her? She's beaten uh, Jordan Grace twice. Mm-hmm. She's beaten ODB. She's beaten Sue Young. She's beaten, uh, well, she she was going to beat Kylie Ray. You know? But yeah. there's also no one. There, um, I also remember Tennille might not be up next because she has a match on Tuesday against Alicia Edwards. Um, so that's another match. In a 12 beat. women tag match. Yeah. Who cares? Well, Why you got to go beat? on to impactwrestling.com uh, to find out who's in the match. I haven't done that yet, so I don't know. But here, oh. here is what it is. Here is why I bring this up now. Is the only one really who's left, who's had any kind of build, is Jazz. And you put Jazz in this situation, and maybe this is exactly where you have Jordan Grace snap. Because why should Jazz be able to do all these things that Jordan Grace should be doing? Sure. And I think you get a much bigger, I, I don't know, moment out of it when you have Jordan Grace take it away from Jazz. And I think that's exactly how you need to do it. I don't think Jazz needs to lose clean and then yeah. gets the beatdown. I think Jordan Grace needs to cost her. And, and don't sell like Deanna Perrazzo was in. Have Deanna Perrazzo like 
I'm just going to get this yeah. pin and I'm getting the hell out. Yep. Because we need to reestablish that Jordan Grace is a badass. And the best way to do that is having her destroy someone who's regarded as one of the better female wrestlers in the world today. Mm-hmm. Now, on paper, on paper, I don't, I don't think, and this is with all due respect to Jazz, I don't think she holds a candle to anyone in the top 10 women's wrestlers of the world today, but. There's nobody left. Yes, there's nobody left. All right. And in the time period that you have this Jordan Grace thing, and God forbid, I know you're going to hate this. Let's have, let's have Deanna murder uh, Alicia Edwards. Let's have her murder. Try to think of women on the impact roster. <laughs> have her, have her beat havoc just cause. And, and, and let's also, while we're doing this, I'm fancy booking now at this point, just roll with me. Let, let Havoc go down this path of she can't win it after her and Nevea breakup and let Deanna Perrazzo beat both of them. Um, and let's keep building this up until we switch Sue Young back to being a face. Yeah. Um, but there's no one left. <laughs> I really wish we would get on board with this AEW Impact crossover. We need to do that. Because we let me tell it. you, and we could, hey, how about this? We could get to a point where, and you mentioned it briefly on the prediction show, but why not have Deanna Perrazzo get fed up with the lackluster competition that's in it? She already has the tweets out for it. We already have it set up. Make the trip to Jacksonville. Decimate the roster. Okay. This helps everyone. Why? You get another – now, <laughs> the person that doesn't help is, in the short term at least, Hikaru Shida. It doesn't help her because, you know, not exposure on TV, but now you have Elevation, you have Dark, and you now have three platforms to put women's wrestling on in AEW. Now, what, now what Elevation is exactly going to be – we don't I know. 100% know yet. Oh, God. You know what? Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Grab Danny Jordan because she is working all of these dark matches. She's worked on Dynamite. She looks great in ring. I love her bit. If she signed to, to Dynamite, have her go over to Impact for the time being while the roster is still a little flooded on AEW. Have her work her way up there as a top star. You just made it move. Um, That's a great way well, do this. <laughs> okay. Just have her come on TV, okay? Deanna, Deanna Perrazzo needs credible competition. And she's gone through the impact gauntlet of mid-carters, okay? There's no one. There's no There's one. There's no one left. Beat Jazz. She beat Rosemary. Jazz. Beat Rosemary. Go to Jazz. She, she kicked Tyler Valkyrie out of the division. Like, there's, there's, this, and there's no one left. You know what? If she was 100% healthy, and I know she's dealing with a long-term illness at the moment with AEW, um, somebody who we haven't seen since January, Big Swole. Uh, she is wrestling tonight on Elevation. Good. And I, I think she is going to be the one who's going to take the belt off of Sheeta. I, I would be okay with that. If not, though, and that's not the plan, okay, send her to Memphis. Okay? Have her invade. Have, okay, she is a great foil for Deanna Perrazzo. Yeah. Ooh, man, I don't know if you're going to do this. Kelly Klein ain't signed to anybody. Uh, that's, another, mm, that's another video for another day. Sure, but you know what? She's at least a top-notch talent who has credibility. It is, but there's an incredible amount of baggage there. Sure, sure, I and I, I get that. I'm I, trying to think of who is on this free agency that we can bring in. Because there's just I, – I don't – I'm going through this list here. 
any way you can bring Tessa in to lose to Gianna Perrazzo? No. <laughs> no. No. Although, should she? Yes. Hear me out. Hear me out on this. And look, I'm going to sound crazy. And everyone's going to point and laugh at me on this, all right? You already do, but go ahead. Tessa Blanchard comes in for one match with Gianna Perrazzo and she goes out on her back. How much does that help her credibility considering the whole bit where she wouldn't re- uh, return to Impact? I agree. In theory, that's a great proposal. I think it's great for her credibility. Not her oh, yeah. in-ring work or her storyline, but it's good for her to get signed somewhere. Listen, there is nothing wrong with her character or, well, hold on, her wrestling character, <laughs> hey, yeah. um, her in-ring work, her promo skills, all of that is top-notch stuff, okay? There's, there's, there's just the matter of ethics here. Sure. I think. And just overall um, out of wrestling character. Um, and you know what? You were trying to use leverage. You got caught, okay? But there is the whole racism issue that hasn't been touched on yet. Um, Which is fair. As of last year, well, I mean, it's been a while, but um, I think that's still kind of a gray area, and that's that may detract some people that have wanted to sign her. Um, but overall, the answer is right in front of our faces, okay? We just had Finn Juice come over from Japan. We've had Private Party from AEW, okay? We've had NWA come to AEW. Okay, there is no reason why, you know, we can't have Impact go to AEW or, or, or vice versa. There's no reason. And I would almost tell you, why don't we just fill up all of Rebellion with that? We might. Like, let's do that. I'm not saying let's do every match champion for champion, but if Britt Baker is not in the title match over here, Let's do Britt Baker versus Gianna Perazzo. I understand heel versus heel, but you could write this up as Gianna Perazzo stepping up and representing her brand because she's never been one to put down impact. This could be the Survivor Series of AEW and Impact. I don't. Th- I think there's more to the build here that we can do. Um, maybe it's double or nothing. Maybe you yeah. build that. Um. I don't know. There's a lot, I think, and it probably calls for creative control, but What's that? Creative control? Yeah. I like it. Here, we've, we've tangented here, so let's let's move oh, on God. before we, we are hated here. Come to BWO where we rant on things you don't want to hear about. Well, I feel like we just presented a lot of viable solutions oh, to yeah. this. Um, I just feel like we got to start acting on them because, as we've said it, there's no one. X Division title time, though. And by God, he's done it. Ace Austin is your new Impact X Division champion, defeated TJP relatively clean. Now, look, a lot of people might point towards the little ref thing, but we had several moments after that. Yeah. In which uh, TJP had the leverage, Ace Austin just overcame. And I thought this was great. Matt Man Fulton didn't even really get involved that much. Mm-hmm. At best, he just caught Ace Austin from dying. Yeah. Um, I don't want to give credit to TJP when I say this, but this was my match of the night. Uh, yeah. Now, I will say the main event might be the runner-up. But I think that's just because yeah. one of the guys in it is... A stud. Stud. And I think you can... Um, yeah, I think y'all know who we're talking about. Yeah, um, the listener of the show. Let me let me springboard off of this because this is this is a great match. Dude, good there. Um, guess who's next for Ace Austin? Chris Bay. Chris Bay. And we, we get, get the rematch. Ace Austin versus Chris freaking Bay. And okay. so is Chris Bay turning face, which is a great spot I think for him. He's worked here now uh, since he's been there. I thought it was kind of a tweener already, but you could work it. But you know what? Like, I'd like to see it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. There's a lot um, of good heels that Ace Austin or uh, Trey, uh, oh my God, Chris Bay can work with. And you know what? I'm going to say something 
real crazy here. Maybe Chris Bay moves up the roster. Oh yeah, there. Okay, so the best it's time. Thing, l- listen, I said that about Ace Austin, but I also think there's a there's a all right. There's a couple of guys that could do that that are the same mold as Ace Austin. The one thing that Ace Austin has um, that maybe like a Trey Miguel doesn't have, um, I think I think maybe there's more charisma with Ace Austin and Chris Bay. I think it's much more natural. Yes. Trey, Trey has to put it on. You know yeah. what else that he has that uh, Trey Miguel does not have? Mad Madman uh, six foot eight, three hundred and eighteen pound Madman. Hold on. Can we also talk about Madman Fulton? How years ago he was in NXT just jobbing, and now well, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to say he was just jobbing. Remember, he was originally part of Sanity, and I oh, think yeah. that was a great spot for him. In yeah, fact, and abandoned it. I would love to see Madman Fulton in Violent by Design. He's only thirty. I just don't want to see him away from Ace Austin at the moment. But maybe yeah, maybe I mean, we can find a way where Ace cuts him and he goes over there. But that's here and there. Let me tell you, Ace Austin's going to hold this belt for a while, I think. Good. Good. And Good. let me tell you, we're going to get the one match I think all of us have wanted. Say it. I think Ace Austin's going to be the man to turn in option C. And we're going to have Ace Austin lose to Kenny Omega. <laughs> yeah, I'd be okay with that. Ace I think Austin's... the match is great. And yeah. I think it makes Ace Austin look like a million bucks. Hey, mm-hmm. for holding the belt on to like uh, Destination X, which I want to tell you is typically later in the year. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of time here. You can run this out before maybe we have him drop it to Moose. Yeah. Do the right thing. <laughs> Keep Moose on your roster. But this match was great. I love this match. And then we got this. Well, then we got Parazo ODB, which we already talked about, thank God. So we don't have I'm to gonna, relive this. I'm going to because we've talked about, you know, using youth to build rosters. And I, I totally understand you don't have the depth for anybody left for Deion Brazo. We already went on that tangent. You're telling me ODB was the best option we had. Hear me out on this. I think she is the best spot at the moment. Um, Because I, I think you're waiting to have the jazz segment versus Deion Perrazzo at, at an actual pay-per-view that people are going to turn into. Mm. And I think having Jordan Grace turn heel there in front of paid people who are going to come in to watch Kenny Omega on pay-per-view. I like where your head's at. There are better options than ODB. Oh, I applaud ODB for the life journey. So that's <laughs> anybody but oh, ODB. Here she did up. not. Okay. Let, let me, let me say, say this. ODB was exposed for being the older wrestler. She was outworked constantly. She botched moves. She, she didn't make Deanna look terrible, but the match was awful. Yeah, it was not a great match. Um, this match went, hold on, eight minutes and 30 seconds longer than it should have. Um, Spoiler alert, the match went for eight minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. No, I, now look, I think ODB is a good choice because you're still having Diana Perrazzo establish that she's better than everyone who was. But oh, why my God. Happen? What? Can we get Gail Kim back for a match? No, she's done. You don't think we she can get getting, back for one more match? She Retirement means like nothing in this business. Right now. Retirement means nothing in this business. She's a backstage producer right now for Impact. You're right. I know I'm right. But that, no, you're right in the sense that Gail Kim is a backstage producer. Stop bringing back old talent. This makes your brand look bad. No, it depends on how you do it. It's not just doing it. It depends on how you do it. Don't have ODB skip the line. Eh. 
Once again, yeah. there's no one. There's no one. We just spent 20 minutes talking about how there's no one. We understand. Oh, okay. Well, then. Who? Who? Who do we give that form. gives any kind of credibility to the win? At least with Deanna Perrazzo beating ODB. I mean, how many times is ODB a, a, a knockouts champion? Three, four times? Yeah, about 10 years ago. Sure. But you're still beating a former champion. Now, look. <sighs> I get that's it. Like, that's like dragging Ric Flair out of retirement and, be, and beating him in eight minutes and 30 look, seconds. Look, now here's the other thing in this, all right? Carlito beating Ric Flair back in 2005-ish. Maybe this is a bad example because Carlito won the U.S. title on his first night. But beating someone who was established as Ric Flair – Still gave him credibility, all right? Now, here's what I'm saying. I I don't have an issue with ODB being here because, A, there's no one else. I don't (laughs) think – like, legitimately, uh, the only other person, like, is is Alicia Edwards, who I think we're going to get just because we have to. Um, Mm. uh, And that's it. That's it. Maybe to Neil, but storyline-wise, it doesn't make sense at this moment. If you're going to bring back ODB for for one small segment of a feud to put over the champion uh, so you can have her say she's beaten knockout champions, I think this is the best way to do it. Because A, I think Perrazzo looked like she was better in the ring, which is good. And her winning just cemented it. Use the storyline. Talk about how Gianna Peraza is better than anyone who's ever been in the company. To pull out Gail Kim for Slam Aversary, so she can beat Gail Kim at Slam Aversary before yeah, dropping the belt. This time. Look, let, look. Let me hold on before you go anywhere. <laughs> let me just go on record because as soon as I said it, I realized foot and mouth. I'm not comparing ODB to Ric Flair career. Yeah, wise. yeah, of course. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying that. But let, but let me say this. While I understand we just went on this big tangent about there's nobody left for Deanna Perrazzo, okay, why put her on the card? I understand she's your knockout women's champion, but why not instead have, I don't know, um, maybe Susan versus somebody, Kimberly versus somebody, put them in a different spot on the card. Deanna Perrazzo, I understand, is the best – has been one of the best women's wrestler since she's come to Impact. We've already established that. If there's nobody there and you've got nothing to do with her, put her put her at ringside. Okay, you gotta have your champion she defend gained, the title. She gained nothing from beating ODB and then stinking up the ring for eight plus minutes. Yeah, you you have further storyline with it. You have her talking about this is this is gonna be exactly what sets her up versus Jazz moving forward. I mean, my thing is, it shouldn't be there, though. There's, it shows there's the, no one shows, else. It shows the lack of depth, though. And this is not. I'm me with saying, you on the depth aspect, but and this, that having her this, beat the legends of old makes her look better. Look, if you just go off and and say a list of wrestlers that they've beaten, sure, you're gonna say ODB, and we're all gonna laugh. But let's not act like ODB wasn't considered the top of the knockout division for a while. A now, while yeah, 10 years ago, sure. But it's still a win over someone who was credible at one point. I think this is one of those things we're going to agree to disagree with because I know you think this was a good spot for ODB. I don't think she should have come back. I, I think, A, she's worked her tail off to get in decent shape to do it. She Agreed. dropped a bunch of weight to do it. Agreed. Been pushing to have one more match. If this was her final bit, I'm okay with her coming in and losing, going out on her back. Now, look, it's once again, this is probably the worst match of the night. Oh, this is like, this is mid card women's WWE stuff. See, here's the thing what was the other worst match of the night? Uh, let me check my notes. Um, the other, the other women's match. And Which, that's my point. <laughs> I 
hate. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me let me clarify. Okay, the Tennille Dashwood tag match. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. That is that yeah. is exactly what I was thinking as well. So, okay. I well, forgot. Yes. Not not the not the women's match. tag title, but yeah. Tennille Dashwood and Caleb with a K versus Havoc and Nevaeh. Correct. I think it made more sense to have ODB here to lose than to try and separate or pull from that because I don't think anyone is going to work well. I think Deanna Prazo versus Havoc is going to be bad and also potentially an injury risk to Deanna Perrazzo. We're talking about her like she's Nia Jax. No, and, and Havoc doesn't have that kind of <laughs> reputation. Yeah. But – her move set still can cause some damage. Oh, yeah. Legitimate, legitimate yeah. damage. And all, right? this, all it takes this is one small right? screw up there. And I know that's with every True. wrestler, but I feel True. like there's more liability there. Um, I will end with this. It all starts with booking. Okay. Whether you're right or I'm right, okay, it all starts with the way that people are booked. And you know, that's all it's all. And that's fair, but you can only book the people who have signed contracts agreed you got a whole that, that is the issue here we need women to sign contracts with impact that yeah. is the division that's hurting the most um i will circle back though um you brought up a good name allison k is a former knockouts champion if they can sign her and that's the next feud i'm this was i will i will i will forgive this Okay. See, I think right you just got to embrace it now. Jazz is next. Jazz is next because it makes the most sense. That's why she hasn't eaten the pins. That's why they already started kind of the setting up the feud for this weeks ago when they set this up with ODB. No. This makes the most logical sense with the booking. <sighs> I don't think it'll be bad. I think, once again, we're just making Donna Praza look as credible as possible. I, I mean, she looks unstoppable at this point. Like okay. legitimately, we have legitimized Diana Perazzo throughout this entire surface this area. You know, we've done this. You know, having her beat Jazz will be great. It's gonna make her look good, and hopefully, it means whoever we sign to beat Diana Perazzo, Killer Kelly, do it, becomes legitimate for beating her. You know, that's all I'm saying. I I, I definitely get what you are getting at here. I agree 100% on that front. I feel like it makes sense storyline-wise, though. I don't want to act like this is Goldberg coming back to win a title. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not that. Correct. You know? All right, let's get to the match that I know you want to talk about a lot here. It's Finn Juice, Dave Finley, and Juice Robinson defeating the Good Brothers for the Impact Tag Titles in 15 minutes flat. I thought the storytelling in this match was really good. From commentary to the in-ring work. Commentary put this over so well. I haven't said it since the switch has happened. I need to say it again. Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown do a fantastic job. It is such a big difference on impact. Yeah. Um, this was an above average Good Brothers match. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, what, you know, other than the finish, I think that's what, impressed me the most was that they were actually keeping up with the younger tag team and I was not expecting it at all because the good brothers definitely have an ebb and flow about them um come in hit their spots back and forth hit the magic killer get out um, I wonder if it's a motivation thing like like a Randy Orton aspect kind of bit like you're good but we're gonna turn it on when it's a storyline you actually care about yeah um yeah, this, this is a this this a this is a good match for me. I I enjoyed it. Like you said, the storytelling was there. What now is the question? Because, um, you know, we talked about, you know, we're coming up on rebellion, and you know, if they do win, who's next? Is David Finley still in the New Japan Cup? You know, just who's next? What's next? I wonder if maybe, just maybe, the Good Brothers win the belts back on Tuesday. That is might that, be upsetting for some people. 
Is that is that actually scheduled already or no? I don't know. I'm I'm just talking on speculation. Okay. Um, because once again, I don't know how far they've taped out. Good point. So maybe we get Good Brothers with a little help from AEW World Champ Kenny Omega picking up the win here, or maybe Don Callis throws a little bit more in their favor. Being um, an invisible hand. That will not happen on Tuesday because Finn Juice will be taking on Triple XL. Interesting. Yeah. I just I wonder how far we've taped out. Because I thought we were only through sacrifice, but we may be further out than that. Especially considering that Finley is over in Japan right now. I wonder if maybe that gets put into a storyline where oh. is Jew still over in Japan? I don't think so. They don't have anything going for him. So maybe we have Juice kind of be the front, be the front man while Dave Finley is finishing up his duties in Japan this week. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Um, and maybe, maybe they also maybe he gets some representation on uh, final card of New Japan Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe we just roll with Juice Robinson holding it down while Dave is out of the country. That'd be fine with that. Maybe maybe Good Brothers get the belts back at Rebellion. I, I just have that feeling that it's going to be Bizkliz holding all the gold at the end of the night at Rebellion. That makes sense. Well, let's let's set that final matchup here with Rich Swan going Go over oh, Moose. Huh? I said, go ahead and keep talking. I got to step away for a sec. You good, you good. So we had Rich Swan defeat Moose, unifying both the Impact World title and the TNA World title. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, this was not the greatest. Well, okay. It wasn't a bad match. It really was not a bad match. Um, you had some really, really great athletic moments here from Moose. Um and you had some timing stuff. So like Rich Swan hitting a handspring cutter, uh, cutting off a moose moonsault where he just climbs to the top rope, runs up it. So uh, you had a lot of great stuff there. My only thing was I did not like how they set up the finish. Um, it's been every finish that Rich Swan has had since he's won the title. Yes. Well, no, no, no. He did beat Chris Bay clean, of course. but. I didn't like how they had Moose charge into every corner and have the one into the chair and then get pinned. It, it just... <sighs> Makes him look like a schmuck. A little bit, yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, like Moose ran this match, in my opinion. I, I mean, Listen. he looked like a million bucks all the way up to the finish. I'm not going to say that this was a carry job because because Rich Swan hit some moves, but what people see in Rich Swan's title reign will know, always man. befuddle me. And and you know what? We're sitting at this a couple days removed from it. And man, and I guess maybe I'm a hater. Maybe I'm a hater. I don't know. I just don't get no, it. No, you're not. Well, yeah, maybe I am though, because if you look, if you look at general reaction to it, some people are just so happy with this. Like, there are a lot of people who are just genuinely happy Rich Swan beat Moose. And, like, once again, this is the second big main event match for Moose that I've seen here on Impact on a Hot Minute, the other mm-hmm. one being the six-man tag. And you know what? He was the standout of the six-man tag when it was happening. He was the standout tonight, in my opinion. I don't know if anyone worked better than Moose tonight. Or, well, at Sacrifice. I don't know if anyone worked better than him in ring. Take that as you will. I don't know if anyone worked as well as him. So, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know why you have Moose lose clean. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, we all, we, we said it on the prediction show and Dave Meltzer, unfortunately, gave it away a month or two ago. Yeah, but uh, man, 
we're, I, I imagine we're going to see Kenny Omega eliminate Rich Swan. He's going to win the belt and then put him out for a couple of weeks, in my opinion, which will be what sparks up Eddie Edwards trying to come in and have a hold harmless match with Kenny Omega. Maybe this will be an exploding barbed wire death match. How's that for a hot take? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I can see the Eddie Edwards, Kenny Omega thing because, you know, they're over here taking shots at impact like they do every week. Yeah. And then saying your failure is because of our brand. You know, that's what gets me. You know, that's what rubs me the wrong way. And Which, I'm Eddie. He's the heart and soul of the company, you know? Yeah. Well, guess what? You're going to get one winged angel to hell. Thank you know? God. It can't happen soon enough. Okay. So. I agree. This match was very good. It was my second favorite of the night. Um, wrong person won. Yes. People have a high respect for Rich Swan, but people can't seriously look at this title run and say, he is the guy we want fighting for our brand. You know, this is, this is the guy winning, winning all types of sneaky ways. You know, th- this is who we want fighting for impact wrestling. We're proud of this guy. We're, we're proud to have him as our world champion heading into rebellion to take on go, Kenny Omega. I won't go that far, but like, uh, if you're going to sit here and tell me, who do you think's going to win between Rich Swan and Kenny Omega? Without a shadow of a doubt, I will never pick Rich Swan. Oh, yeah. No, now, if you said no if you said Moose, I would still say Kenny Omega, but I would no, be like, no, that's like a 60-40 split instead of a 100% to Kenny Omega. You asked that question a million times. Kenny Omega beats Rich Swan. There is n- – now, I don't want them to make the poor choice. Then we will get to Rebellion prediction show in here in about a month, okay? Putting over Rich Swan – over Kenny Omega would be the worst booking decision. That's not happening. You say that Rich now. Swan is not going to win the AEW world title. Now, I completely agree, but we've already seen a handful, okay, since the pandemic has started, of Impact really wanting the TNA. Okay, and I'm not, and I hope this is incredibly wrong. Because Kenny Omega, the gimmick, the belt collector, he will win. He is – he does – Rich Swan does can't, – can't lace Kenny Omega's boots. Yeah. Okay, and that's a fact. Okay. But if Impact is going to TNA really hard – I don't think Impact gets to have a say in the AEW world title. As weird as, like, you know, like I just – I do not buy – that impact is going to say, yeah, we want your champ to lose and lose his belt. On our show. I'm sorry. You I'm know, sorry. Though, Kenny Omega, home. best wrestler in the world, mm-hmm. representing arguably the top or second tier brand in wrestling, the, most, uh, the second most watched wrestling show of the week. Mm-hmm. And, and just in terms of brand, the second most watched brand of wrestling in the week. I agree with happening. you. But I agree with you. But you know, they're going to sit in this boardroom, they're going to book this match, and there's going to be one, there's, there's going to be one shit sipper in there that says, hey guys, what if we just have Rich Swan, you know, you know conquer the odds? I can tell you, I think there's going to be two men in there who say otherwise, and we'll, well, we'll have the final say on it. Well, I agree. One, I, I'm Don saying Callis. that. Well, and that's the most important one. And B, and I think this is the most important one, Tony Khan. Agreed. I, you want Kenny but, Omega to put your brand over at some point down the road? He's got to be your champion for a while. You guys don't get no. to hold the AEW world title. We're just going to bring the eyes to your show. Now, I will keep saying this because I don't want people to think that I actively want Rich Swan to beat Kenny Omega because that's not what I want at all. That's not, that's not what anybody wants. But I'm telling you, 
there are some people that are going to want that to happen. And there will be at least one person when they go to book this match that will say, we need to have Rich Swan, overcomer of odds, God amongst gods, to overcome the Kenny Omega. If I ever meet you, I have no words. If I ever meet you in person, I will, I will kill you. But there's always one person in that in that room, though. You know that is like let's 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 swerve for the sake of a swerve. Yeah. I refuse to give this any kind of any level of cognitive thought. Okay, well then, just aside from this, aside from this, there's always one person in a room where you where you make a big decision, okay, where somebody at some point in the dialogue or the conversation says, let's have a swerve for the sake of a swerve. I refuse to give this any more thought than necessary. <laughs> You are killing my brain cells right now with this talk. I know. And with that, Con, I'm going to go ahead and cut you off because I don't know if there's anything that can make you stop talking about Rich Swan potentially beating Kenny Omega for the AEW world title. It's the plug for PWL. So go ahead and hit him with the plug. <laughs> yeah. Normally we're live. Today's a little different. I uh, hope you enjoyed your spring ahead. Nobody should have. But go check us out on Facebook, where we are typically live every Monday and Thursday, 7.30 on Mondays, Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. on Thursdays, Eastern Standard Time. Check us out on the YouTube, where we post our prediction shows, uh, sometimes post our review shows, have a lot of content coming tomorrow, so please stay tuned. Maybe a creative control this week, Matthew? Maybe a creative control this week. I'm really excited for that, because I have a great idea for it. I have um, four I've written up. Also. Um, I think we should Twitch this week. I think we should Twitch game this week. I'd be down for some Twitch gaming this week. Yeah. Um, essentially, Matt and I are going to take control of a brand apiece on WWE 2K20. Um, we will book out the year. Well, we will take just control, book week to week, show to show. Um, and then while we're on Twitch, we'll have somebody maybe... Um, judge it i don't know they don't have the uh, gm mode in 2k20 but if you've seen um up, up oh my down, god we'll use it for creative control we'll use it for wrong. creative control anyway <laughs> so keep a team keep a lookout for that um Love lastly you. if you support the show and you enjoy the banter and you enjoy the tangents and you enjoy death taxes pwo and Kenny Omega over Rich Swan. Go to PWO slash one. Sorry. Go to, go to Kobe.com slash PWO123. It's as easy as one, two, three. And for just the price of a cup of coffee a day, you can support great shows like this and not support horrible champions like Rich Swan. And on that note, I'm going to see if I can pull this off properly because Lord knows we need a thumbnail. Too sweet, me brother. Uh, 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 there we go. There, Other way. There we go. Other way. Boom! Uh, Close enough. Oh. Close enough, guys. That's been the two-man nice. power trip WrestleCast for you this week. We'll come back. We'll be live on Thursday, okay? Have a great week. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Be great. Bye, everybody.